This year's Halloween special is doubly special because it also happens to feature what is likely the final ever recorded work from my recently departed friend, Emmer Prevost, who many of you will remember online as a movie reviewer, Helsing920, and who passed away uh, just a couple of months ago, really suddenly. We'd been acquaintances for years, but in a fit of good fortune, I had the pleasure to become much closer friends with Emmer over just the last year. But I was always struck by his booming, baritone, natural announcer voice, and I pointed it out to many people over the years. So, of course, as soon as I was going to cast the new Shadow Radio episode, I had to ask Emmer to do it, and thankfully, he exceeded. See, I've always said the biggest part in the Shadow is not the Shadow himself, or Margot, or even the villain of the week, whoever that may be. It's the announcer. Think about it. He has the product to sell. He has by far the most uninterrupted dialogue of any character in the show. And so it's tragically apropos that this, Emmer's final work, will allow him to take that final bow at center stage. Emmer, we're still rocked by your passing. We miss you, buddy. Without further delay, folks, the third ever Orson Welles episode of The Shadow until recently lost to the shifting sands of time and featuring far more pulp elements than many of the later episodes did, The Vanishing Ink, for example. Danger! in the dark. The Shadow, a mystery man who strikes terror in the very hearts of sharpsters, lawbreakers, and criminals. Ladies and gentlemen, when you hear The Shadow's blood-curdling laugh, you can be sure that exciting entertainment will follow. And here's something else that you can be sure of. When you buy blue coal, you're getting the finest of Pennsylvania hard coal. A harmless blue color that identifies blue coal as your guarantee of clean, even, safe, dependable heat all winter long. So don't take chances. Insist on Blue Coal. Ask for it by name. Phone your order to your nearest Blue Coal dealer tomorrow. And be sure to hold on for John Barclay's important message at the end of this program. Today's drama, Danger in the Dark. Margolene, stand by for instructions. I'm ready. You know Wallace Carter, president of the Eastern Products Company? Yes, I know him. Go to him. Find out from him all you can about his cashier, Jeff Green. Jeff Green? Yes, I have reason to suspect him. Very well. One more thing. Watch out for the owl. The owl? Why? Because he sees in the dark. How shall I know him? By the signal of his gang. The hoot of the owl. Listen. <laughs> Report. Limpy, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready, Owl. You, Natey? Okay. This job is for tonight. What's in it? Twenty-five grand. Now listen, the Eastern Products Company is a one-man business. Wallace Carter is the man. His cashier and bookkeeper is a guy named Jeff Green. I know Jeff Green. I have seen to it that you did know him and that he knew you, but not too well. Jeff Green is in this with us. And then what? Keep your mouth shut, Nady. I'll do the talking here. Uh, go on and talk then. You think because I'm blind you've got it on me. You're wrong. Remember, I'm called the Owl. My ears are better than your eyes, Natey. I ain't mean nothing. 
Spill it, owl. The bank has just granted Wallace Carter's request for a loan of $25,000. Carter has left it up to Jeff Green to arrange the details. Now, Carter thinks the money will just appear on the books as a credit for the Eastern Products Company. But Jeff Green has seen to it that the $25,000 will be in cash and in the safe tonight. Why don't you get Green a lift it then if he's waking with us? I don't want Green suspected because we may be able to use him again. He will have an alibi for tonight. You and Nady will open the office safe and lift that roll. Green got the combination of the safe? I haven't asked him for it. I don't want this to look like an inside job. Get in the office in the safe just as you usually do. And then get out if we can. That's up to you. <laughs> Who was that? You, Limpy? Not me. It was only a shadow, Limpy. Only a shadow. <laughs> Now listen, Lucy dear, don't worry. Eastern products is all right. Sound as a nut. We have a little financial crisis once in a while, yes, but that doesn't mean anything. Will this new $25,000 loan clear things all up, Wallace? Oh yes. It's all we'll need and we're more than good for it, of course. I'm refinancing the company. This loan, together with what we've got, makes it simpler. That's all. You're not taking it in cash, are you? No, only in bank credit. The whole thing is no more than a bookkeeping transaction. I left it to Jeff. You don't think sometimes that you leave too much to Jeff? Certainly not. Jeff Green's as good as a son, Lucy. You know that. <laughs> oh, hello, the Carter family. Margo Lane, who let you in, dear? I didn't hear you. I know. I just sneaked in. As a matter of fact, the door was unlatched and I came in. I knew you wouldn't mind. I should say not. By the way, who is Jeff Green? I heard you talking as I came in. Why, he's the cashier and bookkeeper for Wallace. You've probably heard us speak of him. He had an unfortunate start in life. Bad companions, got into trouble. But when he got out of prison, he came straight to me, asked for work. I gave him a job and he made good. Now he practically runs the business. I see. And you've never regretted giving your job to an ex-convict? <laughs> No, Margot, I never have. And I never will. So, Margot, that's where Jeff Green fits into the picture. That's all I could find out in spite of the boy's record. Mr. Carter looks on Jeff Green almost like a son. Hmm. That's unfortunate. Lamont? What does this all mean? It means, darling, that a certain rather dangerous crook I have been watching for some time is beginning to build around himself an unhealthy organization which in time will terrorize the city if he isn't stopped. Oh, but why do you have to do it? The police... <laughs> My dear Margot, I doubt if they even dream of his existence. He's been far too clever for that so far. He's a man of ambition and ability and imagination. I still can't see why you do the work of the police for them. But I don't. The job of the police is to catch, convict, and punish criminals. The Shadow has his own way of unmasking the super crooks. The higher-ups the police can't reach. Who is that man you've been talking about? Jeff Green. Oh, no. Jeff Green is just a tool, a means of approach to the next victim, Wallace Carter. No, the man I want has been cultivating Jeff Green lately for no good purpose. He is called the Owl. Why the Owl? Because although he's stone blind, he claims he can see in the dark. His very blindness has served to vastly strengthen his other powers of perception, though, which he's able to play on the superstitions of his underlings. That's what makes him unique and dangerous. I'd much rather come up against any man with his full faculties than the Owl, especially in a dark room. Oh, Lamont, why do you take any of these chances? Won't you ever give it up, this masquerade as this shadow? And then what? Then perhaps you could settle down and be like other people. We might even... Oh, I don't know. <laughs> you mean get married? Yes. 
My dear, that is something that's been close to my heart for a long time, you know that. But until the shadow finishes his work, I cannot allow myself to think of anything else. Just be patient, dearest. Some day... Well, I'm afraid I've got to run off now. I've got to go down to my office. Your office? Oh, didn't I tell you? I've got an office. But what good is an office when you have no business? Oh, <laughs> you'd be surprised. You see, by chance my office is in the same building as Wallace Carter's. And tonight I think I may have some business with the owl. Evening, Mr. Carter. Not going back to your office this time of night, are you? My dear Cranston, how astonishing to see you here downtown. Don't tell me you've gone into business. Not a chance. No business head, you know. Only thing I was brought up to do was clip coupons. And even then, I never could remember which end of the coupon to clip. <laughs> going up to your office? Yes. Wait till I open this elevator door. The truth is, I'm a little anxious about some affairs. I thought I'd run over the books. The man is off. We'll have to run the elevator ourselves. Well, it's not hard. If I ever lost my money, that's about the only sort of job I'd be any good for. Mine is the fifth floor. I'll get off with you then. I've got a little office in this building myself. I didn't know you had an office. Don't tell me that Lamont Cranston has become a businessman. Oh, <laughs> I know. Must have an office, though, just to keep up appearances. Here's your floor. Which way? To the right. I'll walk along with you. Yes, I suppose if people knew I had an office, they'd think I'd lost my money. I'm sure they would. Here we are. Oh, you're going further on? Mm, just a few steps. Oh, Carter. Yes? If you should need me, just sing out. Need you, Cranston? Why? I'm only going to have a look at my books. Ah, well, I'll see you soon. Au revoir. Goodbye, Cranston. What's the matter with that drill? Ain't you got that box open yet? Shut your face, Limpy. Yeah, there she is. The week. What's going on here? Now's that Glenn Knight. Shut up, I'll take him. I'll... Oh, no, you don't. <gasps> He's out. Come on, clean out that safe. Think anybody hide? Nah, there ain't nobody in the building, not even a watchman. You croak this guy? Not quite. Get busy. This is easy. Sure, and the money's all in big bills, too. <laughs> Who's that? Not afraid of a shadow, are you? The shadow? Beat it, Limpy. I'll get him. There he is. Get out of the way, Nate, and I'll get him. Sorry, but you shot your pal, Limpy. Let me out. I've killed him. Let me out. You had to do it, Limpy, to keep him from killing an old man. Let me out. Let me out. I wish the owl could listen to you, Limpy. I think he'd be surprised. You may beat me, but you can't beat the owl. You think not? Listen, go to the owl and tell him this. When I am ready, I'll handle him in the same way I handled Natey. That's cheap talk. You can't do it. You think not, Limpy? I'll take him and you and Jeff Green unless... Unless what? Unless you promise to be a good boy, Limpy. I'll promise you one thing. I'll get you when you open that door. Look, the door is opening. Ready? Shoot. <laughs> It's Limpy, Jeff. Let him in. It's about time, too. That you, Limpy? Who do you think it was, Santa Claus? Where's Nady? Dead. Who killed him? I did. I tried to get the shadow. It was an accident. Then the shadow will have to die. A life for a life. You better make sure it's the shadow's life. That's all. You get the doll? Sure, 25 grand. I'll take care of that, for the present. You talking about easing out the Shadow Owl? How you gonna do it? We ain't never seen him. No one ain't. You can't see him. You think you do, but you don't. And you can't rub out a shadow. <laughs> you forget, Limpy, that I'm blind. 
For me, there are no shadows. So what? I'll show you. You and Jeff get up as quietly as you can and take your stations in some part of the room where I won't expect you. What is this, blind man's bluff? You have stated it exactly. Ready? Let me see if I can call it that. You, Limpy, are in the right-hand corner near the window. You, Jeff, are by the fireplace. Am I right? How do you do it? For one thing, I could hear you breathing. Yeah, maybe. How... how'd you tell us apart? Nature often makes up for the loss of one sense by an increased sensitivity in the others. How will cross with a bloodhound? That's what you are. Something like that. But that doesn't help us get the shadow. You fool. Of course it does. The shadow cannot see in the dark any more than anyone else can. Only I, the owl, can see then. Let me get the shadow in a dark room. And he's mine. When you start figuring ways and means to save money for Christmas gifts, fuel is probably the last thing that comes to mind. Naturally, you don't want to jeopardize the health and comfort of your family, but did you know that you can actually have better heat for less money simply by burning blue coal? Here's why. Blue coal is a rich Pennsylvania anthracite, the fuel that furnaces, space heaters, and cooking ranges in this part of the country were especially designed to burn, and while other fuel prices are advancing, the cost of anthracite is not. No wonder thousands of homeowners are switching back to anthracite. No wonder anthracite is the fuel that is used for cooking purposes on the nation's packed passenger trains. They've tested all kinds of fuel and found that anthracite is far more economical because it burns long, steadily, evenly, with minimum drafts and less attention. Now the cream of all Pennsylvania anthracite is blue coal. It comes from the mines of the famous Glen Alden Coal Company. It's tested and retested for purity and uniform sizing. Blue coal is prepared especially for home use, and it comes in all domestic sizes. Egg, stove, chestnut, and peat. So if you want clean, even, dependable heat at the lowest cost, always order blue coal. Phone your nearest blue coal dealer tomorrow. You'll find his name listed in the where to buy it section of your classified telephone directory, under the name Blue Coal. How is he, Mrs. Carter? Still alive, Margo. Can't say much more than that. But he will get well? The doctors say so, yes. But it'll take a long time. But I suppose I should look on the bright side and be thankful that we have Jeff Green to run the business while Wallace is laid up. I see. Jeff Green. I don't know what I'd do without him, dear. Jeff is acting in Wallace's place now. He has power of attorney. What? Oh, yeah, someone has to carry the work, and poor Wallace. I see, so Jeff Green has power of attorney now. Three o'clock. I've got to be getting back to the office, Al. All alone now, you know. Yes, I know. You have power of attorney. I told you that. We'll use it. We'll withdraw the entire cash balance of the company. Liquidate all securities. Cut the firm. Take everything that can be realized. You understand? Yes, I understand, all right. But when we stage the 25,000 hole from the safe, I had an alibi. If I do this, I'm out on a limb. How much do you think we can realize? I should say 60,000. That will do. We'll split it even, Jeff. With 30,000 in your pocket, plus your share of what we've already got, you can afford to grow another limb. Maybe so. Who's going to cash the checks? You are, naturally. The bank won't suspect you. Saturday morning will be the best time. It'll give us an extra day before anything will be discovered. Okay. Saturday morning I close the account. In cash. Of course, I am going with you. What for? Don't you trust me? No, Jeff, I don't. I don't trust anybody. Have it your own way. You talk about splitting this evening. Where does Limpy come in? He doesn't come in. He stays out. Does he know that? He doesn't, and he won't, unless you tell him. Limpy is a gangster. This is no gangster's job. And besides, I'm getting a little tired of Limpy. And so he gets the double cross. If you care to put it that way, yes. Margo Lane. 
While Wallace Carter is convalescing, Jeff Green has been given the power of attorney for Eastern Products Company. Find out what type of pen he uses. Fill pen of same type with vanishing ink. Contrive to meet him and exchange your pen for his. Stand by for orders. It was delightful for you to bring me here tonight, Mr. Green. I was only too delighted to have you come, Miss Lane. Odd that we never met before at the Carters. <laughs> yes, isn't it? And then to wait until they were in such trouble. Poor Wallace Carter. What a thug the man must have been to attack him like that. Well, you know these crooks, Miss Lane. Pretty ruthless. I suppose they must be. I should think it would make anyone, any human being, that is, actually sick to have to associate with him. Oh, yes. I dare say it does. By the way, you're going to let me see you again. Surely, but you don't know my address. That's love, so I don't. Here, I'll write it for you. Have you a pen? Yes, yes, of course. Here's my fountain pen. Oh, how stupid of me. I've upset my coffee. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We'll, we'll get some more. Wait up! There, you'll be able to read that easily. For a while. We're right in front of the bank now, Owl. Turn right and be careful of the step. Ah, thank you. Right here. Here's the paying teller. Good morning, Mr. Green. Morning, Henry. Got a lot of money on hand? <laughs> well, enough to take care of our customers, I guess. Why? Well, I have a pretty big check for you this morning. We have a big deal on. Here it is. Unfold it. We want this in small bills. Nothing over twenties. Why, Mr. Green. What's the matter? You've forgotten to make the check out. What? Here, let me see it. This is a blank check. It, it can't be. I made this up myself, with my own fountain pen. This morning. Well, there's nothing on it now. You must have brought the wrong check. Yes, I, I guess I must have. I, I, I can't understand it. You fool. What are you trying to do? I'm not trying to do anything. I, I made this check out this morning, and now it's blank. Well, go over to that desk. Write a new check. Pull yourself together. Yes, of course. Guess I made a mistake, Henry. I'll make out a new check. Uh, Mr. Green? What is it? Is that check to be on the Eastern Products Company account? Why, yes. What's the matter? The account was closed out yesterday morning. What? Mr. Carter called from the hospital, and our cashier went up there and arranged the matter. I thought, of course, you knew about it. No, I... I, I didn't know. So, you double-crossed me after all, Jeff. Me? I, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't... Quiet, you fool. Uh, come on. Let's get out of here before they suspect something. Now, Jeff, come across. What's it mean? I don't know, Owl. I swear I don't know. I didn't think Carter suspected anything. You're sure you didn't squeal to Carter? Of course not. You don't think I'd do that. You don't. I hope not, Jeff, for your sake. <laughs> What's that? Probably Limpy. Better let him in. Okay. I will. What's with all this junk on the floor here? Looks like somebody's packing to go places. Oh, that? I was just searching for something, Limpy. Yeah, that's right. The yeah, owl's just searching for something. Yeah? You trying to cross me, you two? Well, I won't stand for it. I won't! Put down the gun! I will not. Not unless you come across... Who oh, knocked that gun out of my hand? <laughs> I thought I told you to be a good boy, Limpy. The shadow. Lock the door. Turn out the light. Now I've got him where I want him. Really, Al? How interesting. I got Limpy's gun! Stand back, you two! I'm gonna shoot! Shoot this way, Jeff. When you're quite ready. Blame fool, you shot me! Limpy, I, I didn't get you bad, did I? I hate... I hate... I'm through! <laughs> Jeff, I knew the time would come when I'd have the shadow alone in the dark. Give me that gun. Here, take it. Get him. <laughs> I'll get him. I can hear him breathing. Driving this 
this way, Owl. Ah. Uh. Owl, you didn't hit me. You can't. Oh, can't I? Bad shooting, Owl. Can't you hear me breathing? Missed again, Owl. I know where you are. I've got you. What? What happened? Owl, you hurt? I'm very much afraid that the owl went through the window. He was... impulsive. I quit. I give up. Don't kill me. I wouldn't bother. By the way, Jeff, you may be interested to know that the check you wrote on the Carter Business Stationery was written in shadow ink. Vanishing ink. By my orders. That's what happened. I'm afraid so. Incidentally, I also have the 25,000 you originally stole. It will be returned to Carter. Open up here. Better let him in, Jeff. What does it matter now? What's going on here? Shots and a dead man out of the window. You're under arrest. Surely you wouldn't arrest me, officer. Who was that spoke? Try and find out. I'll find out. And when I do, I'll put the bracelets on him. Herbert Officer, you can't arrest a shadow. <laughs> Before we tell you of the Shadow's next exciting adventure, here's John Barclay, Blue Cole's famous heating expert, with that important message I promised you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Barclay. Friends, there are just a few more days left in the month. That means that homeowners have only a few more days in which to phone their Blue Coal dealers and get the full details on how they may have a Blue Coal heat regulator installed in their homes for a free trial period of two weeks. To me, this is the most unusual offer ever made. The free use of a Blue Coal heat regulator for two whole weeks without any obligation on your part to buy. Believe me, friends, until you've used one of these marvelous thermostats, you don't know what real comfort is. Imagine having your home warm and cozy from morning till night without once having to make a trip down to the furnace. And that's not all. You'll find you burn far less coal with this regulator, too. But don't take my word for it. See for yourself. Phone your blue coal dealer tomorrow. I thank you. Friends, for your own sake, do as Mr. Barclay suggests. Phone your blue coal dealer tomorrow and get the full details of this amazing free trial offer. Prove to yourself what thousands of satisfied homeowners already know, that with a blue coal heat regulator, you get more uniform heat and more economical heat than the most expensive oil burner can give you. But don't wait. Phone your blue coal dealer tomorrow. The story you have just heard is copyrighted by The Shadow Magazine. The characters in this story are entirely fictitious. Any similarity to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Join us next week when the Shadow will demonstrate that... The weed of crime bears bitter fruit. Crime does not pay. The Shadow knows. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha,